So specifically, the following issues will be addressed first. The effects of the current highly Russified language environment on the Belarusian society and its possible impacts on the recognition of national identity. Uh, and the second will be the value of establishing Belarusian study overseas. And I will take China as a case because I come from China. And therefore, this may contribute to research on the social significance of Belarusian language and may provide a point of view from a Chinese scholar's perspective. So by reviewing the current situation of Belarusian studies in China, I address the importance and, and explore the possible model for the promotion of Belarusian language and culture overseas. It's worth noting that here I'm not... I won't be able to provide a comprehension uh, review of Belarusian studies among all foreign countries due to practical constraints. And China will be the only case to study. Thus, it may be beyond the scope of my speech to predict all possible uh, situations that may occur in different national conditions. Here, I will mainly focus on the issues of the relationship between language and national identity. And the part of language teaching overseas is the exploration of a possible pattern on the national image promotion. So we are going to talk about a little bit on Belarus as a specific case among FSU, former Soviet Union. If we use a search engine like Google to, to check is Belarus, the, this question, dot, 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 and a possible automatic result could be, is Belarus part of Russia? Here, I take this confusing name joke of Belarus as a start. Why do people, I mean foreigners, getting confused on this issue? It can be explained from three aspects. First, the stereotype of post-Soviet countries, in particular for those with smaller sectional areas, like for Baltic states, which I'm currently I'm doing my research on. For Baltic street, uh, so, sorry, for Baltic states, this issue also uh, has somehow get the impact on the national image. And second will be the supranational union relationship between Belarus and Russia, like a special relationship of these two countries. And the third one is the de facto primary language in Belarus is Russian. So, I man, uh, so here I will mainly focus on the third a aspect. There's a tendency to remove the colonial language from the public sphere in the post-Soviet context. This opinion is from Pavlenko from 2008. And consequently, despite the fact that Russian was the official language of the Soviet Union, it has now lost considerable status since 1991. Uh, sorry, most former Soviet uh, Union countries have attempted to expand the functions and raise the prestige of their titular language. The case of Belarus is distinct from other FSU countries in such a trend. Belarus is the only one among 15 post-Soviet countries which recognize two official languages at the same time while also admitting the higher status of Russia via its native language. So after the collapse of USR, uh, Belarus had a short period of recognizing Belarusian as the only official language until the referendum in 1995. This can be seen as one of the means of de-Sovietization procedure, which makes an Im impact on the recognition of Belarusian national identity. And rebuild the concept of nation is considerably in important for a newly independent country, and the influence of language cannot be overlooked. As Baycroft argues um, in 1998, so it's kind of old li literature, but he argues that sharing of real or perceived characteristics, for example, language is one of those characteristics, is an important way to build a nation and make people obtain the sense of belonging. So during the Soviet era, let, let's go back to the Soviet times, the promotion of Russian language among republic is one of the effective ways to construct the identity of Soviet citizen. This can be reversed, like to cancel the um, dominant status of Russian language for the deconstruction of the Soviet identity. However, this de-Sovietization process in Belarus did not go well, comparing with other FSU countries like Estonia, La Latvia. So first of all, there's a problem for Belarusians to make a highly demand, um, 
the language proficiency of Belarusian language. That means um, it, it makes the linguistic Belarusification process become um, very complicated to a certain extent. According to a report I've uh, I searched from Belarus Digest in 2011, only 2% 2 of ch children in Minsk attend a Belarusian-speaking school and only 19% of pupils are taught in Belarusian in the whole country. In such circumstances, it can be considered that the Belarusian language has become a dialect instead of an official language. This dilemma should be regarded as a Soviet legacy. Simu um, simultaneously, the ethnicity relationship between Belarusian and Russian should also be noted. Apart from this, the neglected link between Belarusian and Bel um, between Belarusian and Belarusian national identity also affects the existing state of affairs. So there's a scholar named Tol. I, I I can't pronounce her name. Sorry, but her name is Tol Kust Pleva. I, I think she is Polish. Maybe notes that some ethnic Belarusians admit Russian as their mother tongue, and for the, those who declare Belarusian to be their mother tongue, the fact of bilingual or multilingual practice is almost inevitable. A recent survey of Belarusian reading practice, which was converted by the Novak Laboratory in 2014, shows that 99% of the respondents choose Russian for their preferred language for reading fiction. Um, but I, I, I don't know if this statistic could like cover the whole um, situation in Belarus, because it's the only resource I've, uh, I found is from the, that Novak Laboratory. So let, let's see, um, preferred language. So for language preferences, 93% uh, choose Russian language and only 5% choose Belarusian. So this happens not only in reading but also in almost all aspects of contemporary social life. An important factor of the de facto de Belarusification in Belarus after 1995 is the uh, leader Lukashenko leading a pro-Russian government. So he strongly supports the Russian language and has made some public speech which even declined the status of Belarusian language. So th this move can be interpreted as Lukashenko's reconstruction of a Soviet Belarusian identity. So it's like an illusion of good old Soviet days. Nevertheless, promoting the Russian language may enhance the exclusively good relation with Russia. But under the premise that Russia is not the um, Soviet Union anymore, so whether this approach will bring advantages in the long run is worth of further discussion. So here I'm, oh, I, I, I really, I didn't realize I, I'm going to run out of my time, but I will do a brief introduction on Belarusian studies in contemporary Russia, and maybe this could be a possible model. So in April 2016, the first study program of Belarusian language and culture in China has been launched at the Beijing International Studies University. Prior to this, a Belarusian teaching and research section has already existed at East China Normal University in Shanghai. Considering the huge sum of funding which BISU has got from the government of Beijing, this is a political task from the local government in the actual fact. The start of Belarusian program at BISU should be considered as a result of China's one belt, one road strategy, which I think Peter will uh, do a further presentation in the afternoon. So that is to say, it's more appreciated to call it as a political action rather than academic. It's worth noting that there is no Belarusian research project at the top universities in China. At Beijing Foreign Studies University, the leading institution of foreign language teaching and research in, China, uh, in Chinese academia, the only two programs in School of Russian Studies are Russian and Ukrainian. The reasons for the absence of Belarusian language here can be divided into two parts. First part, the lack of practicality. So the status quo of Belarusian is, uh, is kind of per per pessimistic in China, and thus the new program may lead to future employment problems for students. And second, it will be a problem of lack of teachers and teaching materials. So many Belarusians, including teachers required to teach in Belarusian, had considerably uh, difficulties using the Belarusian language, not to mention the lack of Chinese teachers in this area. 
In China, there is a criticism of blindly open new teaching program at universities. So the quality of Belarusian language program at BISU is still in waiting for inspection. The teaching experiment of Belarusian language at BISU is conducting in the following way. By combining the major of Russian and Belarusian together, so it's kind of like the environment in Belarus, like they use uh, Russian and Belarus together in the society. And this form provides students with a broader space for development and it's, uh, it also reduces the risk of unemployment after graduation. A large number of cultural courses are introduced into this program, which may be conduct, uh, conducive to the Belarusian national image construction in an international context. Besides, this demanding for teaching materials may benefit the publishing industry in Belarus on their language. So in summary, I, I need to stop. <laughs> so in summary, although there are many uncertainties and unforeseen risks in this program, it's advantageous for save and promote the Belarusian language from an international perspective. The teaching mode of Russian plus Belarusian or English plus Belarusian can be explored in the future, but the possibility of ignorance on Belarusian part should be noticed as well. Thank you very much.